What's going on guys? It's Gendo here. Hope you're having a good day and welcome back to another edition of the Great Chicago Fire. If you're still enjoying the series, please go and hit that like button. Now today, we got our very first match versus New York City FC, but of course before we get into that, we got some more MLS stuff to go over. Oh wait, you thought you were out of it after the first episode? But wait! That's right, we need to go over trades, the MLS squad registration, and then after that, immediately, the waiver draft. But before we go any further, I'd like to thank you all very much for the tremendous support on the first episode. It's absolutely appreciated. Just about 300 views, 50 likes on it. Couldn't have asked for anything better. I really appreciate you guys. But first and foremost, we do actually have some transfer news, believe it or not. As you can see over here, we had four outs, three of them loans, one of them a full-on sell. Michael Stevens, the guy who I told you at the very first episode, I said that a lot of Norwegian teams were coming in from, he was bought out by Moldy for $600,000. Now, the thing about this is $600,000, we don't receive all of that. The league, MLS, takes a third of that transfer profit into its own coffers, and then we get the rest of it. So, even though we traded them out or we transferred them out for $600, we only get $400,000. And that in turn goes into our general allocation money. Now, on the other hand, we do have a new person coming in from our academy. He is a goalkeeper. He is 17 years old. Jesus Ernesto Quintero Morenos. I don't think I said that last name right, but a 17-year-old goalkeeper, he's more than likely going to be my third choice now because he's so much better than McLean, basically in the shot stopping. Look at that, 16 handling, 16 in reflexes. Yes, like I said, he isn't all that great. He's going to be a developmental project, but 17 years old, those aren't bad stats for a 17-year-old. All right, and now let's get into the trades that we have made. We have made three trades, one with New York, one with Orlando, and one with Sporting Kansas City. Let's get to the first one first, and that was the trade with Sporting Kansas City. We have brought in Ike Opara, a center back, and we traded away a super draft pick, our fourth round draft pick in the 2019 super draft which I might as well get into the super draft, what that is now. That is essentially the overall drafting at the very beginning of the MLS season where we select players that are coming out of academies and from colleges to bring them into the league. Now, it's just like all the other draft picks from all around the other leagues, MLB's draft, NFL's draft, all of their off-season drafts. This is basically MLS's version. So we traded away our fourth round draft pick in the 2019 Super Draft for Ike Opara. He's 27 years old and he looks fairly solid. Like I said, I needed some depth. He might be challenging for that second center back slot behind Zhao Mera and Johan Kapilov. Just taking a look at his stats. 13 marking, 13 tackling, 12 positioning, good in the air at six foot two. great heading stats, great jumping reach, great physical stats, at least in the speed side. The next trade, which is essentially a trade in name only, it's more or less akin to a transfer. We have brought in Kevin Molino from Orlando City and trading away $50,000 in targeted allocation money. Kevin Molino, a left attacking mid, and you might be saying, Brian, you already have a couple of good left attacking mids already in David Akam, but outside of him, I'm not going to rely on John Goosens. So just in case I need to put someone over in the right-hand side, if I need to move David Akam to the right, then Kevin Molino will take over the left-hand side, and he can slot in just fine. Look at that pace. 14 pace, 15 acceleration, good in dribbling, good first touch. If he can finish, then he can. And that's why I'm playing the inside forwards. I'm looking for players that can move out on the wings and then cut inside and be deadly from those wide areas. So that's why I'm bringing in Kevin Molino. And then finally, we traded away our fourth round pick of the 2018 Super Draft to New York City FC to bring in Mix Discarude. Now, outside of my two midfielders, in Razvan Kokish and Nick LaBraca. We didn't really have a lot of depth, a lot of good depth. Michael Stevens was there, but he just was not good as a backup. So in comes Mix Discarude, and the former U.S. international has kind of fallen out of favor. Still has some pretty good stats for a 25-year-old. I'm actually surprised that New York City FC were allowing him to leave, just taking a look at what he's got here. 14 first touch, 15 passing, good mentals, good physical stats as well, great vision. I mean, this was almost a steal here after giving away a fourth round pick in a super draft, but that just means we have three picks now in the upcoming super drafts, 2018, 2019. We have four in 2017, but that's because of a previously made trade from I think last year or two years ago. So the time comes every March 1st and wait a minute, hold on a second. 
There you go. Now you can see everything that's down below because that's the important bit that I'm about to get into. Every 2nd of March, you have to submit your squad registration and everybody that's not assigned to your squad gets waived and then gets put into the waiver draft. We'll talk about that in a second, but let's go over what the below means. First things first, maximum squad size of 28 players. That is cut and dry. Everybody in the league has to follow those rules. You can't have more than 28 players on your roster. Next up, maximum of three designated players in the squad. That is also league-wide standard. And as you can see, we only have one in David Akam, which means in the future, we could bring in one, maybe even two more if we have enough money in the cap space to bring them in. Next up, we have eight international slots handed to us. But as you can see, we only have seven. Uh, and you can see right there, David Arshakin is not going to be staying on the squad. And I'll just go over the entire roster, who's staying, who's going, once I'm all done with this. Next up, we have a maximum of eight off-budget players. And off-budget players basically means that they're designated as either reserve or or senior minimum salary as you see here with Brandon Vincent. Now senior minimum salary means that they are a senior player but making the league minimum. And then below that we can have no more than six reserve players on the squad which as you can see right here Morel, Castrilli, and Morones are all reserve players meaning that they can freely move between the senior squad and the reserve squad and no penalty to us but at the same time if we try to release them they do not affect the salary cap. If we release them, then there's no money taken off the books. Maximum squad salary of 3650000 As I said before, that is also league standard. And just taking a look below, we're just a hair over $3 million in our salary based off of all of the players that we have sold, traded away, loaned out, and are just about to release from our squad. And then the last cut and dry thing, minimum squad size of 15 players. Nothing more needs to be said about that. It's straightforward. All right, so now let's take a look at what we have on our roster. What are we dealing with? I'm just going to get rid of the unavailables to show who I have loaned out. Fernandez, Duty, and Connor already off the books since they are being loaned out to other teams. Morel, Castrilli, and Morones, I also want to try and loan out so they'll possibly be taken off the books at the end of the day. But the two players that I am willingly going to give up for this season, Patrick McLean and David Arshakian. Like I said before, Patrick McLean, third string goalkeeper, was never going to feature in the side, so why keep him on, get rid of him, and train up Morones? Meanwhile, David Arshakian, third choice striker all the way. He really, really was not going to get any chance in this squad. It's either going to be Delu or Solignac or maybe even somebody else that'll bring down the line. Who knows? So yeah, he's not going to be staying on. He's gone. And that is pretty much why our current wage budget is what it is at $3,050,000. So if I click confirm selection, it'll give you a prompt saying, are you sure you want to submit the squad list? These are the players that are unregistered, are Shakin and McLean. If you click OK, both of those players will then be taken out of your squad and put into the March waiver draft, which takes place just two days later. Now let's click OK here and then go into the waiver draft. Now, as soon as you click that prompt and skip ahead a day, the very next thing that pops into your mail is the waiver draft. Now, what the March waiver draft is, it takes all the players that have been released from the clubs in that March squad registration, puts them into a draft, and allows teams to pick from a big pile of players that they could possibly bring in to help their squad. Of course, you still have to pay their contracts. You still need to re-register them when you pick them up. It's not like you're picking them up on a free and they don't count towards the salary cap. No, you still have to pay their contracts. And if you, put, if you pick them up and they go over your budget and you got to get rid of them, well, then... That was just a waste of time. So what we're going to do is scout the players. There are nine players in the March waiver draft. We might as well take a look and see who we got in here. Let's view this draft. And as you can see right here, our Shakian is there. McLean is there. And to be quite honest with you, the only player that I could possibly think of picking up at this point in time, just because I don't have any depth on that left side, is Jordan Stewart. If you take a look here, marking between 10 and 13, tackling of 12, position between 8 and 11, he's okay so I would figure if I pick him up, he would be around the same level as like a Patrick Duty, maybe around a Brandon Vincent. So it's nice to have somebody that could play out on that left side. Because like I said, right now, I just have Brandon Vincent. Michael Harrington can be over there as well, but he's more of a right side. Patrick Duty, 
yeah, I just realized I don't know why I loaned him away, but if we bring on Jordan Stewart, it's depth on the left-hand side. So the reason why we're picking first is all tied to the supporter shield. First to last goes in reverse order. Last place in the supporter shield goes first, first place goes last. So that's why we're picking first, and that's exactly what we're going to be doing here. Jordan Stewart is going to be drafted into the Chicago Fire because we do have enough money. I mean, we still have, what was it, 550000 600000 available to us in salary cap, and I'm pretty sure he's not going to be asking for that much money. So bring him in, get the depth going, and then as soon as we're done with that, we can skip to our next pick if we want. And we do still have one more pick, but I really don't want to draft anybody else. So we're just going to pass and finish. If The button is behind me. Pass and finish. There we go. The buttons pass and finish behind us. So it, you can do that from the very start. You don't have to pick anybody. You could just pass your turn and finish the draft right there. But be forewarned, if you pass at your very first time, you don't have any option to pick any other players. So now that we skip ahead a day, we get the prompt saying that Chicago has drafted Jordan Stewart and we must immediately register him with the squad because if we don't, he then becomes ineligible until the next squad registration, which is in the middle of July. It's either the beginning or the middle of July. So I don't wanna go four months without having this backup player that I just drafted. We need to sign him on right now and as you can see, hold on a second, let me just pop that up and you will see how much of a squad hit it will deal to us. It apparently does no damage to our squad and probably it probably added the tally already. So as you can see, our squad budget is now 3,150,000. So we still have 500,000 left in play to bring in another player, which means we could feasibly bring in a designated player if I so desired. I do have a few in mind don't know if they'll actually pan out, but maybe further down the season, we may bring someone else in depending on how good or how bad our season is. But other than that, that's all the trades. That is all of the waiver draft stuff and signing in the MLS squad registration. Let's play a match, shall we? Let's get right into our very first match of the season, Chicago Fire hosting NYCFC. So we're playing at Toyota Park, the home opener, the season opener, taking on NYCFC, and this is the first roster for the Brian Gendo era. We're going to have Sean Johnson in net, Ramos, Kapilhoff, Opara, and Vincent along the back line. Kali Tiam will be the defensive mid. Discarud and Kokish will be the two center mids. The two guys out wide will be Molino and Akam. And the guy sitting up front, Michael Delu. This is what we're going to go with. Crossing fingers. Hopefully all goes well. Let's get this off to a great start. Chicago Fire debut. Come on, boys. All right, early on, two minutes in, Kokish with a corner. It's Clear back inside. Kawi Tiam! What has happened right there? The ball fell to Molino. He assisted it to Kawi Tiam, who honestly puts a slow roller into the near post. And it's 1-0 to the fire. Come on, you men in red. Let's go. Let's take a look at this again. Molino, back heel. What a cheeky back heel to the lone in from MTK. Kali Tian, the defensive mid, puts the fire up 1-0. So far, we are absolutely bossing this match. 25 minutes gone. Free kick, Molino, top of the box. Oh, man. It hits the wall, but we do have it back. Kokish to a calm to Kapelhoff. I don't know what Kapelhoff's doing that deep. Still putting the pressure on NYCFC. We have had seven shots, two of them on target, 55% possession. David Akam. Why are you even doing that? That's why he's not a striker. Another corner kick, Kokish to Kali Tiam. Oh my God, if Kali got two goals, that would have been unprecedented. NYCFC coming up the wing now. 37 minutes gone inside of David Villa. Oh, and they equalize. What a great cross. It's a great goal. What you didn't see back and forth is this was a highlight going for about two minutes straight. And it ends in an NYCFC goal. It's a great goal, not gonna lie. The defense should have done a little better with that one. With the amount of possession that we have and the amount of ball movement we're getting, I can't see us not coming away with a second goal. Decent ball movement around the 25-yard area. Ball out to Rodrigo Ramos, who puts in a shot or a cross. I don't know what it was. It was bad, is what it was. So I'm deciding to make all three of my subs at the same exact time. Jalmera, Jordan Stewart, Nick LaBrocca all coming on. Let's see if they can become difference makers. 76 minutes on now, good ball movement. Molino oh, tried to get it into Delu, but Mix does get it into Delu. And just like that, the Chicago Fire are up 2 1 with 14 minutes to go. Michael Delu, take a bow, son, putting us into the lead. Molino trying to do the same exact thing that NYCFC did to us. 
but a great pass and it looks even better in the three-dimensional replay mixed to Delu back of the net far post barring anything catastrophic in these next 10 seconds Chicago Fire are going to come away with their first win of the season. David Akam using his pace. Take it to the corner. That's exactly what you should be doing as a veteran player. And there it is. Ref blows his full-time whistle. It's the final. Chicago Fire 2, NYCFC 1. And we win our first match of the season, boys. Congratulations. It was a little nerve-wracking, but hard-fought nonetheless. And we come away with all three points. Congratulations, boys. So this is what we have going on in the future. And as you can see, we're going to be taking on NYCFC again in one month's time. That's the thing with conference scheduling here in the MLS. Everything's so unbalanced. You can be playing and everybody a week apart from each other. So that's just how it's going to be. But as you can see, our other matches, Orlando City, Columbus Crew, Philadelphia Union. And then I think we'll actually be coming back against Montreal Impact and DC United. Montreal Impact for one because of Piatti and DDA Drogba. Uh, it'd be interesting to see what a 38-year-old DDA Drogba can do to us in the game. I actually saw what he did in real life. It wasn't pretty. But uh, yeah, let's see what he can do in the game and then follow that up with DC United who are a relatively strong force in the Eastern Conference. So that's what we're going to be doing next time around. Oh yes, also, I totally forgot. We may actually be having one more signing. It may be another striker. It may even be a designated player. Who knows? I don't even know if he's actually going to decide to sign with us. He already has a few other offers from other clubs. So we'll just have to wait and see next episode. And I hope you tune in then. But as far as this episode goes, we have reached the end. I'd like to thank you all very much for watching. Of course, if you liked what you saw, please go and hit that like button. It means a lot to me. And of course, if you want to subscribe to the channel, do so as well. Any comments, leave it in the comment box below. And as always, guys, this is Gendo, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care and peace out.